My task this morning is to, um, or my, it's my, my pleasure to present the most recent Gini data, which is now up to 20 years, so young adulthood. Um, uh, you've heard a lot about allergies and allergy prevention, just the most important facts um, are summarized here again. You know that the prevalence of allergies has increased over the past decades, especially in children. And over the course of the lifetime, um, more than one third are affected by one or more allergic condition. And so far, there's no curative treatment available. We have lots of medications to suppress the symptoms. We can avoid allergens. And of course, there is immunotherapy, but this is not primary, but secondary prevention. And you've already heard in the previous talk that allergies present a major public health issue, not only because allergies decrease quality of life of um, those affected and increase morbidity and um, some allergic conditions, even mortality, but it, it, um, allergies are associated with considerable costs for the society. So we have a really strong interest in primary prevention strategies. And one study which um, was set up to um, address this question is the GENI study. GENI stands for German Nutritional Intervention Study. And um, it was um, um, planned with the hypothesis that um, we could reduce uh, or that we could reduce the risk of developing aller allergic disease by reducing the allergen content in infant formula and by reducing the allergen content um, to induce tolerance. And the idea was um, um, developed in the 80s, but was finally funded in 1995. And this is when um, the GENI study started. Sorry about the presentation. Um, you've already heard by that time there were a lot of discussions about partial hyd hydrolysates, the different processes to, um, um, to um, do the hydrolysis, um, extensive hydrolysates, which ones are better. Um, and the GENIE study was um, set up to assess the differential influence of the different hydrolyzed infant formulas in comparison to cow's milk based uh, a cosmic based formula during the first four months of life in children at risk based on family history. We've just heard a little about, bit about family history um, to define these children on the development of allergic disease um, until three years of age. That was the original Genie study. And uh, what was done is recruit in a Prospect, it's a prospective birth cohort and um, uh, the uh, researchers recruited healthy term neonates who um, had a family history of atopic disease in at least one parent. The study was um, performed in Germany. Um, here you have the, sorry, the map of um, Europe and within Europe here we have Germany and the two um, cities are Munich, which I think most of you will have, will, will have heard about. Sorry, I don't know what happens here. Yeah, there we are. And then we have Wesel, uh, which is close to Belgium, where the previous speaker um, is sitting right now. So more than 1,000 children were recruited in each of these centers, and they were randomized to receive either partially hydrolyzed reformula, extensively hydrolyzed casein formula, extensively hydrolyzed reformula, or as a reference, um, cow's milk-based formula. And um, this was started within 14 days if breastfeeding was not sufficient. And breastfeeding, and the formula were fed exclusively until four months of age. But a very important point in the study design is that the um, groups were blinded until the third birthday. 
So nobody knew what the children were getting, which is very important for the quality and interpretation of the study data. And you've seen and heard a little bit about the Gini study results already. Here is um, atopic eczema, um, a typical clinical picture. Um, and what the Gini study showed that there was a significant reduction of atopic dermatitis, both at age three and at age six in the groups who received either extensively hydrolyzed casein formula or partially hydrolyzed we formula, but not, and that is, um, oops, I hope this works, yes, but not in the extensively hydrolyzed we formula group. So allergenicity and risk reduction of allergy and development of atopic eczema depends not on, on the basic protein, not on the size of the protein, but most likely um, on the specific allergic epitopes resulting from the hydrolyzation process, as Professor Van den Plas um, has told you already. Here are the groups with a significant reduction. We've also heard a little, about, uh, a little bit about family history and the influence on development of atopic diseases. Um, the GINI study was complemented by a larger population-based um, cohort. And the two cohorts together are called the GINI Plus study. The GINI Plus study comprises um, more than 3,000 children from these two German recruitment centers, um, which were um, recruited independently of the family history of A2P. And here you see the development of atopic eczema in those children with a positive family history and here with a negative family history, which emphasizes again that family history is a small risk. But what I want to show you here is that you can modify the family history with nutritional intervention. Here you've got um, the non-intervention, oops, sorry, with a positive family history. And you see with these two formulas, you almost get the risk down to the risk um, of those children with a negative family history. So risk can, you, it can be attenuated by early nutrition intervention. Atopic dermatitis wasn't the only um, outcome that was looked at, and you've um, heard um, about allergic rhinitis and reduction of allergic rhinitis until um, puberty. At 15 years, allergic rhinitis was reduced in those um, children or uh, who had received either the partially hydrolyzed Wii formula or the extensively hydrolyzed casein formula during the first four months of life. And again, there was no effect um, with the extensively hydrolyzed Wii formula. However, you've heard that already, there have been a lot of discussions over the years whether um, this finding can be extrapolated or is reason to, for um, prevention guidelines. There have been conflicting results in different meta-analysis and Cochrane reviews questioning the preventive effect of hypoallergenic formulas. And so far, none of the studies available have examined the long-term effects until young adulthood. So, and now it's really my pleasure to um, tell you about the most recent data of the 20-year follow-up of this Genie and Genie Plus cohort. Um, the field phase, so recruitment of these um, uh, study participants was started in 2016 when the first of the study participants uh, reached their or came to their 20th birthday and was finished in 2018. So um, exactly 20 years after um, the um, recruitment period for the original cohort was finished. And the um, participants at this time received a questionnaire. We didn't see them. They only received a questionnaire which um, dealt with health development, their lifestyle, environmental factors, and social economic factors, all um, parameters that had been um, collected over the previous 20 years already. 
There were other um, items, food, um, frequency, eating habits, um, uh, social and psychosocial factors, which I'm not going to talk about today. The main challenge uh, with the 20 year study was, as you can imagine, I think, is that we had to change the contact from the parents who were our main contact until puberty. But now we had to contact the participants themselves. themselves. Many of them had moved out of their parents' house and um, uh, were actually living in a completely different city. So a lot of updating contact and inf information reminders um, uh, to, to get a high response. But we were successful. We invited of the original study cohort, I'm sorry, we invited more than 3,600 participants and of those more than 70% responded to our invitation. For today, um, I will concentrate on the original Genie cohort. Um, as I told you already, these were 2,252 infants recruited in Munich in Germany and in Wesel. And for the 20 year follow up, we were able to recruit more than 50% of these original um, um, study um, participants, which is really quite a good outcome for a birth cohort until young adulthood. And here you see that the effect we have been talking about already on atopic dermatitis persists into young adulthood. What you see here is the intention to treat population and the per prot protocol um, um, population. This is the, um, uh, the um, uh, these are the families who really complied with the protocol. I'm very sorry, I don't know why this is happening. Um, and uh, you see for the different formulas, the black column is the cow's milk formula as the reference, then our partial hydrolysate we formula. This is happening by ghost hand, I don't know. Um, the Green is the extensively hydrolyzed WE formula and the blue is the extensively hydrolyzed casein formula. And you see the columns for the age periods. Um, the earliest childhood um, is the first um, set of four columns and then the last set of four columns is the period we are talking about right now from 16 to 20 years of age. And what you see is that the prevalence of atopic dermatitis or atopic eczema is decreasing from early childhood until young adulthood. That is something we know if we look at um, the figures about the natural history of disease. And what is also quite um, um, striking is that the prevalence remains lower in these two um, intervention groups um, um, then in the comparator, um, comparison cow's milk formula group, which is highly significant here for the partially hydrolyzed we and the extensively hydrolyzed casein formula. So the effect persists. We have heard about allergic rhinitis in young adulthood. This effect is no longer significant. Um, we have discussed the reasons, and it is probably because um, the, um, the participants themselves now answered the questionnaire and the perception of symptoms might have been different to what the parents saw and what the participants see themselves. So the effect on allergic rhinitis is no longer significant, but we were really um, somewhat surprised that we saw, now saw an effect on asthma, which was not there before. Here, first of all, is the period prevalence of asthma um, uh, for the um, different formulas, same colors, black for the cow's milk formula and red for the partial hydrolyzed wheat formula. Asthma was asked um, in young school age, seven to 10 years, then adolescence, 11 to 15 years. And now we have the period between 16 and 20 years of age. 
you have the male, the um, um, prevalence in male subjects, male subjects, and the prevalence in female subjects. And as we know, during early childhood, asthma is more frequent in males, which you can see here on um, these columns. And um, then as um, life goes on towards puberty and young um, adulthood, the females have a higher prevalence of asthma. So this really fits with other epidemiologic data. However, um, when we take these two together, then what we find at, um, at this um, age, 16 to 20 years of age, that asthma prevalence is lower with the partially hydrolyzed formula, the red column, and the extensively hydrolyzed formula, casein formula, the blue column compared to cow's milk. Here is, um, the, uh, are the uh, statistical numbers where you here have the, um, this is the uh, prevalence from 16 to 20 years of age with a risk reduction of more than 50% for the partial hydrolysate and the extensively hydrolyzed casein formula. So this, um, the Gini study at 20 years still supports the, um, the um, um, hypothesis that there is a differential in effect of infant formula on manifestation of atopic diseases. And this is evident in the groups who received extensively hydrolyzed casein formula and the partially hydrolyzed wheat formula. The effect is strong and persistent with regard to atopic dermatitis, atopic eczema from three to 20 years of age. And at young, at, at, during adolescence and um, in young adulthood, we also see a significant reduction in asthma prevalence. Um, I, I showed you the numbers more than 50%. We did see a little trend at age 15. However, then it was not significant. And as um, uh, in the uh, previous um, assessments at younger ages, there was no such effect in the extensively hydrolyzed we formula. Um, there are a lot more data to come uh, as we collected environmental lifestyle and other things, um, but um, I, I hope and perhaps I can present um, other effects later. And um, you know that the German, uh, the, the Gini study not only looks at allergies, um, but also um, um, into a lot of other um, issues interested, interesting for, for um, pediatrics and um, epidemiology. So just to conclude, the Gini findings confirm the concept that early nutritional intervention with certain hydrolyzed formula, if exclusive breastfeeding is not feasible, has a preventive effect until young adulthood for both eczema and allergic airway manifestation with a markedly reduced prevalence of asthma after puberty and a persistent beneficial effect on incidence of eczema until adulthood with both the extensively hydrolyzed casein and the partially hydrolyzed wheat formula. Nutrition during the first months has a lasting effect at least until young adulthood. And personally, I'm already looking forward to um, uh, the 25 year follow up of this very interesting and fascinating cohort. And with that, I um, would like to thank um, the big Genie team, which um, has been working over the years. And I'm really proud to be part of the Genie team. Now you've heard about Andrea von Berg and Dietrich Berdel, who have founded the study together with colleagues from Munich and Düsseldorf. Um, and we really hope that the Genie study will continue. So thank you very much for your attention.